Homo Vision. My name is Matthew Todd and uh, I wrote Blowing Whistles, the play. So what is it all about? What is Blowing Whistles all about? Um, it's about a gay couple. It's set the day before Pride. It's their uh, 10th anniversary on Gay Pride. They met 10 years ago on Gay Pride Day and they've had a drinks party and uh, everyone's gone and they decide to go on to Gaydar and uh, get a young man around for a threesome. Basically, one of the young younger guy takes a shine to one of the couple at one point and uh, it's about the repercussions of that over the weekend. So, and it's kind of, kind of a bit of a critique of contemporary gay culture and the gay scene and the commercialization of, of gay culture, I guess. And about relationships and open relationships and trust and monogamy, and all those things which I think are quite relevant to uh, gay men in 2008, I think. He only likes straight acting men. I don't believe this. Right, is there anything else we need to do? I don't know. Maybe we can get David Blaine to make my fat camp ass disappear. Well, you could change that shirt. What? Well, it's really camp. It is not camp. It's bright and stripy. You look like a gay zebra. Well, just go and let this old man in. He's not going to want to do anything if you look like some wacky Timmy Manor for him. It was just frustrations I had with gay culture and my experience of growing up, which was not being able to come out to my parents, not being able to come out of school, hearing homophobia from my parents and from school and from the church that I occasionally was taken to. Um, and then going to a youth group, which was held in someone's bedsit, uh, which I didn't think is, is necessarily the kind of healthiest way into the gay scene or gay culture or coming out or whatever you want to call it. And I still don't think there are provisions for, for young people coming out. It's kind of pretty much left to it. And I think the gay scene's a really adult place. And I think that's quite scary, really. You're very young, aren't you? 17, is that a problem? No, no, it's not for me. It's if you I would have thought so. It must be wonderful. How come he looks different from his picture? You don't. But he does. So you talk about Gaydor quite a lot in the um, mm. you know, online dating and everything. Do you think that's a, a good thing or a bad thing for like um, for young gay guys? Anyway? Um, I think it, different people have different opinions and obviously Gaydor is brilliant and, and it does what it does very well and it's an amazing site and, you know, and lots of people, as people are always telling me, make friends on there and you know, lots of people meet boyfriends. I just think it's incredibly sexualised and I, and I have, I, you know, the play is as much too to me as well as anybody else and I don't know whether, certainly when I was young you didn't have the options to go online and to have various different kinds of sex with various different kinds of people at the, at the click of a mouse and I don't know, I think there is an issue with uh, self-esteem in, in the gay community, I think we don't like to talk about it because we want to be tough and happy and be positive and, and to say to other people actually it is great to be gay and it is equal and all the rest of it but I think there are issues of self-esteem and I think we all know when we go online you see lots of people especially young people putting themselves in really really dangerous situations and I think that's what I wanted to explore in the play and hopefully the play is linking into you know, the homophobia that you grow up with you know from school and parents and all the rest of it with maybe some of the things that we do that we might not necessarily want to do. And I think any I think anyone who comes out should be proud of themselves. I think it's it's really difficult to to you know to deal with your shit and your issue and, and your issues and to come out to people. I think that's something we should be proud of. I think there's loads of great things about. I mean, you st start. I would start sounding like I'm talking in cliches, but you know, there's lots of great things about the gay community and gay people. And, and I've had the most amazing life so far, which I wouldn't have had if I, if I'd been straight. But I think it's also important to look at the things which are more troublesome and difficult. And I think we tend to not do that and I think maybe the gay press because it revolves around bars and clubs and the scene and, and, and is funded by those people always has to continually say everything's great everything's positive go to this club do this sleep with all these people it's amazing so there's no, not much room to say actually maybe there is a problem and also we don't want to be siding with people who want to bash us and attack us and ultimately this issue and the gay scene all the problems that I guess we all kind of rail against and you know the drug culture and the kind of slightly crazy club culture sometimes that goes a bit over the top. I think it all comes about because of homophobia ultimately. So I think you know I think maybe there's a time where we have to stand up and say yes there are things there is shit heaved upon us but we need to take control of it and maybe stand up for ourselves and maybe I mean maybe I am naive but I do think maybe we could all give a shit about each other a little bit more and I think maybe it doesn't seem to me a lot of the time that we respect one another and I think that's a problem in contemporary culture because everything is so commercialized anyway I think the whole world is like that at the moment you know we don't seem to care about each other which is makes me sound like Miss World but I do think it's a it's a problem okay and what 
place at your audience as well, what do you want them to go away with? What would you want them to take away? Well, be, I mean, it is a comedy as well, so hopefully people will come and have a laugh. So I hope that they will enjoy it, and, and hopefully it will just make them think. And someone said to me that recently that someone came out and was saying, that play has changed my life and changed the way I think about things. And that, I mean, that's amazing. You know, it's incredible if, if, that, if it does that, have that effect. But also if people come, they just have a laugh and enjoy it for two hours and go home. That's great too, but it would be great if you, know, if you could think, could make people think about things, perhaps. Manners cost nothing. Jamie, this is Cumboy17. Cumboy17, Jamie. Do you have a real name? Yeah, it's Mark. All oh, right. <laughs> Hi, Mark. How funny. What's funny about it? Well, I, I just didn't think of you as um, having a name. Um, describe a play in three words, so. Very, very funny. Um, I don't know, kind of, I don't know, provocative, funny, hopefully, um, engaging, sexy. Okay, and why should I see it anyway? Um, why should you see it? Because well, hopefully it will say something about your life, and I think ho hopefully it's a bit, it's kind of provocative, and hopefully it's, it's challenging, and it's not. I think I've seen a lot of gay plays where you just go and everyone's like, oh, we're gay, isn't it fun? And everyone laugh along with all the gay jokes. Well, hopefully this, it's, a, it's like that intentionally in the first half, but in the second half, hopefully it turns that on its head a bit and, and kind of, you know, holds a mirror up to the audience, which makes me squirm when I watch it, because, like I say, it's as much to myself as to anybody else. So. OK, when's it on and where is it? It's on at the Leicester Square Theatre, blowingwhistles.co.uk, um, until November the 29th.